Good morning, I'm Charlotte McBride, and you're watching PA Harness Week. We decided to give you a change of scenery this week, so I'm here at Mohican Sun at Pocono Downs, where the sun is out, the weather is warm, and the track is hot. We've got a great show in store for you this week. Take a look at some of the action you can expect to see in this next half hour. This week, the action continues for the Y Series at Pocono. And did you know that driver Corey Callahan is the leading driver in the nation this year? I have a great interview with him to share with you. Plus, Kelly Connors catches up with Pocono's top trainer of 2012, Chris Oaks. Will he be able to duplicate that status this year? We'll also head to Yonkers for more of the Levies. Racing's fastest pace half hour is starting right now on Comcast Sportsnet. Oh, they go. Explosive matter hits the Colonial easily. Underway. Starting fast outside here is Brent Messenger into the early. Fifteen five and four the half time. Just over three to go. At the top of the track. Well, hello there, Kim Asabi, and welcome to Harris, Philadelphia. And it's another exciting, action-packed 30 minutes of PA Harness Week. This lovely lady to my left, her name is Heather Vitale. The lovely man to her right, he intones ever so humbly, is me, Steve Ross. And we are going to be, in essence, your master of ceremonies over the next 30 minutes of wow, yeah, exciting harness action. Wow. Thank you. You sounded like a driver coming down the stretch. Ha! Yeah. I was kind of excited because you know what? Meanwhile, let me tell you what's going on with Sunday. It's family day here at Harris Philly. What's going on? They have food specials. You won't believe $2 hot dogs, $2 jumbo pretzels, $3 beer specials, if any of you are into such things. They have face painting. There is a beanbag toss, and between the ninth and 10th races, you may get an opportunity to actually go on the racetrack. Oh my gosh! Without some so guard yelling, hey, yo, get off the track! <laughs> and I they have free giveaways. Yeah! So, and the point is, it's family fun day. That means bring the family. Yes. What if you're a single guy and you have no family? <laughs> um, well, I don't know. Can't you just have a pretend family? <laughs> yeah, just do, do that all the time to pick up chicks. Do a virtual family. Man, that'll work, right? <laughs> yeah. Just go like, hey, yo, you want to go inside and eat some hot dogs? Come on, we'll throw some faces around. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a beanbag tossing uh, and face painting. I guess subliminally, I want the face yeah. tossing, but I, that's not going to happen. But it's a great day. It happens every Sunday here at Harris, Philadelphia. Be there or be square, okay? Now, Saturday's third at Mohegan Sun at Pocono Downs was another Bobby Weiss late closer. Yes, all kinds of Bobby Weiss, Weiss action happening. So and This is the third leg, which doesn't apply to human beings unless you're a horse because horses have four legs. Okay, <laughs> let me just get to the action. All right, yes, Mohegan Sun of Pocono Downs. One and one A is an Irv Miller trained entry. The one is Sky's the Limit with Irv's son Marcus Miller in the bike. And then one A is Coco Mara with the driver Eric Carlson. Number two is Twin Creeks Jesse. Um, I really like this horse. I don't know if you remember, but on last week's show, I said I really thought this horse was improving each week. So let's set it up to announcer Jim Bavilia for the call. And it's UF Dragons Cruiser with the lead, but what a brush from Kenzie's Beach Boy. Now takes a slight edge, and UF Dragons Cruiser has to respond as things have really quickened now on the front end. Two back is Sky is the Limit, and not wanting to get uh, caught watching the paint dry, he comes flying up the inside. Further back to Twin Creeks, Jesse. Big gap to Kokomar and Darm Initiative is the trailer. Three quarters, 124 and two. They sped up to 27 and one in the back there. UF Dragons Cruiser trying to hold off the pest. Kenzie's Beach Boy, Twin Creeks, Jesse wheeling out three wide, and sky is the limit right there at the pylons. Top of the stretch, UF Dragons Cruiser has the lead out wide, Twin Creeks, Jesse. Sky is the limit now gets moving, but kind of stuck in between. Sky is the limit finding his stride. Twin Creeks, Jesse is there to the line. Twin Creeks, Jesse. UF Dragons Cruiser gets the front by the time they get to the stands, but then there's like this big brush from Kenzie's Beach Boy. I put some pressure on the leader. In the end, though, it's Twin Creeks Jesse who makes his three-wide bid with driver Andrew McCarthy in 152 and 2. 
A sky is the limit. Got a good trip. Took second. UF Dragons Cruiser was there for the show money. Okay, the fifth race at Mohegan Sun at Pocono Downs on Saturday. It was another Bobby Weiss leg closer. The third leg, three-year-old Colton Gelding Pacers, number two, Axiom Hanover. Now, if you're keeping score, you know he was the beaten odds on favorite from the seven hole last week. Well, he went off with more generous odds of two to one this time with Andrew McCarthy, number five. Rockaholic with Matt Kikaley was the five to two second choice. And number six, let's rock together with Jim Morrill Jr., the seven to two third choice. And with the call, Jim Bavilia. No joking up front here for Rockaholic, moving at a pretty good clip. And now Kikaley going to the whip to see if he can give him more. Deep Sea Hanover is hung right with the leader. Still on the inside, Spartacus PV. And now Simons tips that one to the outside. That leaves the pylons there for Axiom. Hanover who moves up to fourth. Militia Man has caught some live cover there, fifth. And let's rock together at the back. Three quarters, 124 and three, 27 and two, third panel. That's going to be tough to sustain here for Rockaholic, Spartacus PV up on the outside. Still there, Deep Sea Hanover from far back, Militia Man. Top of the stretch, Rockaholic digging in. Outside, Spartacus PV up the passing lane. Deep Sea Hanover and Axiom Hanover grazing in the grass. It's Deep Sea Hanover, Axiom Hanover to the line. Deep Sea Hanover. Well, Rockaholic jetted to the front, cut the mile, but got cooked in a hot third quarter and finished dead last. Deep Sea Hanover off at 7-1 to one with Eric Carlson. Took the two-hole trip, sat chilly as Rockaholic committed Harry Carey, as it were. Just beating Axiom Hanover a neck in 152-3. and three. Number one, Spartacus PV, and we know the PV stands for... Pete Venturini, the owner. Yes, indeed. <laughs> off at 5-1 to one with Mike Simons, got third, and now the tenth. It was a preferred trot. It was a preferred handicap trot, and with that, the lovely Heather Vitale. Oh, you're so specific today. All right, first, $25,000, number one is Tall Cotton, the favorite is six to five. This is his third start coming back after he had a nice little hiatus a few months off. He's looking really good this year. Number five is Modern Family. This horse has had seven starts going into this race with five wins. In fact, his most recent victory was at Harris, Philadelphia. Tall Cotton has the lead as they reach three quarters and one, 25 and two, 28 even third panel. It's Tall Cotton trying to hold off Modern Family, still about three parts of a link back. Zaito Myra has lost some ground further back there to Photo King. Top of the stretch and Tall Cotton has the lead. Modern Family now takes to the inside. Tall Cotton, Kakali goes to the whip and Tall Cotton starts to kick away. Modern Family can't get there. Tall Cotton. Tall Cotton set off most of the teletimers including the most important one. The, the last one. That's right. <laughs> Wow, you are I sharp know, today. I know my stuff, babe. You okay, know. he does it in 153 and 3. This horse is trained by Ron Burke. Familiar name here, driver Matt Kakali. This is the first one of the season for Tall Cotton, and I'm sure like the first of many for 2013. Modern Family got the place money. Third went to Photo King. And we will have more exciting action from Mohegan Sun of Pocono Downs later in the show. I promise, cross my heart, hope to die. And also, when we come back, ready for this? We are going to have the big hoss in action at Harris Philly. That's right. Gold receiver will be in action. And also, our Charlotte McBride catches up with the nation's leading harness racing driver. Go away. Golden receiver. A length band three quarters clear. Fred and Ginger past the apex of the first turn. Tonight, it's ladies' night. The lights are low. And the stakes are high. Sometimes ladies' night is just a date night in disguise. At Mohegan Sun, wherever tonight takes you, it's your time to shine. Feel the action. Get a taste of victory. Spice things up. And play to win. Get it! Mohegan Sun, Off-Track Wagering, Allentown, Carbondale, East Stroudsburg. Always leave happy. Hi 
Hi there, welcome back to PA Harness Week. Along with Heather Vitale, I'm Steve Ross. And we threatened before the break to introduce you to the world's leading harness racing driver this year. And you might, you got to guess who it is? It's not one of the usual suspects. Would you hmm. agree? Yeah, I, I, mean, I, guess, I think you're right, yeah. yeah. So it's kind of a surprise who this is, I think, right? Uh-huh, yes. Okay, who do you think it is? We'll find out right now because Charlotte McBride caught up with him. Thanks, guys. I'm here with driver Corey Callahan. You had a big week last week, 3,000 wins. What did that mean to you? Yeah, that meant a lot. You know, um, it's, been, uh, it's been a really good run here for me. Uh, luckily, the wins have kind of racked up pretty quickly, so... Um, you know, I was just here celebrating 2000, I guess, I think it was two summers ago. So, you know, hopefully the next thousand comes up quick and, you know, I can win it here at Chester. And it's a big year for you overall. Now you're the leading driver in all of the United States. That's a huge accomplishment. What does that mean to you as well? Yeah, you know, it's, it's been a really great year. I've had a lot of good horses to drive, a lot of good people to drive for. And, um, you know, when you start doing well, you get better better horses to drive for and, and uh, you know, big-time trainers to drive for. So, you know, I'm hoping for big things this year on the Grand Circuit and just kind of see where we go from there. We're always hearing about you on the track, but off the track, something big going on with you. You were elected to the Board of Trustees for the Harness Horse Youth Foundation. Do you look at that as being a big accompli accomplishment as well? I feel honored that they, that they asked me to, um, you know, be on the board. You know, I, I had participated in, in the program a couple times there before. And, you know, I mean, it's, it's a really good thing for the sport, you know, to be able to introduce a lot of these kids, you know, to our sport. And, um, you know, they, they learn a lot of things as well about, you know, responsibilities and how to take care of the horses and things like that. So, you know, not only does it teach them, you know, to, to go on to be, you know, maybe our future stars in harness racing, but, you know, also just... They learn a lot of good, um, you know, life qualities, and uh, I think it's, I'm, I'm very honored to be a part of it. Why is it so important to you to do stuff like that off of the track, away from driving? Well, I'm fortunate to be in a position that I am, um, you know, getting to do something that I love every day, and, you know, I just want to be able to give back in any way that I can. You know, I've, I've done a lot of other fundraisers in the past, and, you know, this is just another chance for me to, you know, um, give back. So, Well, thank you so much, and I know we'll continue to see you week in and week out. Thank you. <laughs> back to you guys. Thank you, guys. And by now you know that was Charlotte McBride and Corey Callahan. He's having a stellar year so far, and quite frankly, it couldn't happen to a nicer guy, could it? Oh, he's such a sweetheart. He's yeah, the best, I'm he? so happy for his success. Comes from a great family. Oh. So good. All right. Now, let's get back to the action right here at Harris Philly on Friday. It was the 11th race. It was the feature. Winners over 25000 bucks in their lifetime. Don't let that fool you. Thirty grand on the line, but it could have been a lot more. Some serious horse flesh in here. And the most serious of all was the horse that was handicapped by being given the seven hole. And it was assigned to, drum roll please, Brrr. Golden receiver, surprise, surprise. We went off from one to five with Tim Tietrich. Number seven, Fred and Ginger. Six to one with Yannick Jingra. Number one, your horse, dial or no dial, with Dave Miller with seven to one, third choice. And with a call, our buddy James with right. Golden receiver, a length and three quarters clear of Fred and Ginger past the apex of the first turn, and they're tracked by dial or no dial in third spot. Lemon M is fourth and sitting five lengths off the pace. Two away, fifth special T Rocks in the gold headgear. Kyle Major is second from last, and the back marker is better as glass. Sitting 11 lengths behind Tim Tietrich and Golden Receiver off a 27 and 1 first quarter. It's a sensible pace, and Tim Tietrich's trying to ration out Golden Receiver's speed, maintaining that length and a half lead over Fred and Ginger. Dial or no dial is content to track from third, and Fleming M is still five lengths off the lead while fourth. Special T-Rocks floated wide with seven to make up outside the half mile. Kyle Major and Better's Glass of the trailing twosome. An eight and a half lengths would cover the lot after a 55 and three half mile. Up the backstretch, Golden Receiver still with a length and a half lead over Fred and Ginger, who's tracking intently from the pocket. Dial or no dial is going to force a quickened pace, moving to the far turn as he's taken second facing the breeze. He's up within a half length of Golden Receiver, and Flem and M's been towed up to within a length and three quarters at the quarter pole. 
Then it's a break of three to Kyle Major, who's laboring inside of specialty rocks and fanning wide from the back as better as glass. Three quarters and 122 and three. And dial or no dial, put away golden receiver effortlessly. Dial or no dials, four in front at the 150. All right, golden receiver, to the surprise of absolutely no one, left from the seven hole like a shot, took command, and cut the splits. Now, just before the three-quarter pole, dial or no dial, the nerve, the temerity of this animal, came first up, looked golden receiver in the eye, and spit in it like... Tui? You know the horse up in the Poconos? No, that's Tui. Oh, sorry. That horse's name is Tui. Oh, okay. Winning in 149 of four and beating Fred and Ginger by a length. Flem and M, yeah, I know it sounds pretty disgusting, off at 18 to one with Corey Callahan was third. Golden receiver faded to finish fourth. What's up with that? Well, first of all, two things. But the first thing is, before the race, you said dial or no dial was yeah. my horse. I do not own the horse. <laughs> There's no affiliation. He's just one of my favorites, and I just happen to the like the name. college horse, dial or no dial, right? That's a long story. But anyway, I do love dial or no dial. Also, I love Golden Receiver. Um, it, he's just really not fond of this track. I know that he won the week before, but that was just kind of like, you know, he was lollygagging around. I mean, he could have gone on, you know, so much faster, like at the Meadowlands or whatever, just has a hard time on this track. Certain horses like certain courses. All right, so that's two things you love, but things happen in threes. Do you love me? Uh, hello. Uh, hello. Thank you. Stay with us when we come back. More action. I'm talking hot action. Bro, he can sign a poking him down. Don't go away. NF Happenstance is back on top. She likes to work on the front end. She's been dominant at Dover, winning three straight. time to shine what will you do at mohegan sun wherever tonight takes you it's your time to shine hey there and welcome back to pa harness week we have more action because we promised it we have to give it to you we have to deliver on our promises or we could quite frankly be arrested and incarcerated <laughs> wow. by the tv police really yeah you know that you didn't know that no surprise <laughs> third race sunday mohegan sun pocono downs it was another bobby weiss it was the first leg the fourth late closer now, if you're a little confused by the divisions, the legs, the limbs, the closers, the early closers, late closers, join the crowd. But just enjoy the race. Here's Heather. That makes me feel better. Okay. <laughs> well, this time it's for three-year-old Philly Trotter. Number three is NF Happenstance, the one-to-two favorite. Goes into this with three wins out of four starts so far this year. Number four is Classic Martine. Now, this is her seasonal debut. And number one is Queen of Moore. She's batting 1,000 in 2013. She's one for one. NF Happenstance by about a length and a half and trying to stretch that lead. Classic Martine now lunging back up at her in the pocket. Queen of Moore also getting close there with the green blinkers there. Third and South Wind Diva behind that. Then gapped out to Tim Lizzie and Bullville at a girl. NF happenstance keeping the pressure off her still by a length and a half. Three quarters, 128 and 1. 29 even third panel. NF happenstance. Kirby still has an ass. She stretches now to a length and three quarters. Classic Martine Miller trying to get more from her. Then further back to South Wind Diva and Queen of Moore. Top of the stretch, NF Happenstance. And now Classic Martine takes her shot in the passing lane. NF Happenstance is still there. NF Happenstance. This was pretty cut and dry. Never an anxious moment for NF Happenstance. What's that stand for? I think that NF stands for New Freedom. I think that's the town in Pennsylvania that she was born. I'm pretty sure. This is a great way to say to our fans, go to HarnessWeek.com if I'm wrong. Send us an email if you, you know, want to tell us what the NF stands for in case I'm... No, I didn't mean the NF. I meant the happenstance. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, 
Okay. Um, first of all, can I finish my analysis on this race? Okay. Excusez-moi. She wins at 156 and four with driver Vic Kirby in the bike. By the way, we don't see a whole lot of Vic on the show because his hometown tracks are Dover Downs and Harrington Raceway. So I'm really happy to see him in the winner's circle in Pennsylvania. He's a, a friend of mine, always donating to charities, my favorite causes, and um, just a really cool guy who promotes the sport. Do you love him too? Um, he is super. Oh my gosh, I'm <laughs> telling you, Vic Kirby, I'm, I'm really glad to have him on the show this week. Classic Martime, second, Queen of Moore was third. You're not going to believe this. Race five on Sunday, another Bobby Weiss, late closer, number four, first leg, three year old Philly Trotters, number two, Lady Dynamite when Andrew McCarthy was a slight three to two favorite over number one. Parilla, or is it Parlia Hanover, off at eight to one with Andy Miller. And number six, Lady Broadway with Wilbur Yoder. You know who that is? I, I don't know him. I don't know either. But I'm sure Mrs. Yoder does. We'll talk there in between. <laughs> well, you went up at five to one, and here's the call. Three quarters, 127 and 1, 28 and 1 there on the back. And now Parley, a Hanover makes a break. So Thamita still standing. Lady Broadway looking to move. Late kick coming from Quiet Snow. It's up of the stretch. Thamita trying to hold together. Lady Broadway moving up on the outside. It's Thamita and Lady Broadway with the momentum. Lady Broadway. Now, I thought this was a total no brainer with Lady Dynamite and Lady Broadway. If you're into playing day games and no brainer exactness. Well, if you'd have done that here, you'd have lost. Sorry. The two chalks made early breaks and ended up in different zip codes. Ready for this? Lady Broadway set a, turf, a perfect pocket trip and got up to win in 156 and 2. Number 7, the Mida, who cut the mile at 10 to 1 for Matt Kikaley, got the belly. Number 5, Quiet Snow, my favorite kind, off of 30 to 1 with Mike Simons, closed well for third. Now, here's details. The try. $2,491. The Super with seven to one shot. Doe Boyce was fourth, paid $18,430, $921 for a dime. Tell me you can't make money in this game? Hello. Oh, that's nice. Very nice, okay. Time now to go to our Kelly Connors, who caught up with last year's leading trainer at Mohegan Sun at Pocono Downs. A very neat guy, his name is Chris Oaks. Thanks, guys. We are here with the leading trainer from 2012, Chris Oaks. I don't know if it's just pure coincidence. We're kind of matching here tonight. I'm thinking a lot of your wardrobe is, are your colors yellow, right? Yes, that's kind of matches a little bit. <laughs> so last uh, time we caught up with Chris, the end of last year's meet, you said your plans were to take a much-needed vacation. Did you get to get away? Yeah, I went on about five of them this winter. <laughs> so I'm, I'm ready to go now. Nice. So talk to us about how your uh, goals are setting up for 2013. Um, <clears throat> so far, so good. Uh, we're back working and racing now, which is, uh, I'm very happy to be back at work here. And uh, uh, my goals are, are pretty simple. Uh, I just want to win both training titles again this year and like maybe three Breeders' Crowns. <laughs> <laughs> That's all. Just maybe three or four, throw them in there. Uh, you have a lot of babies, uh, some from some beach somewhere that you picked up at the end of the last year. Talk to us about what you're gearing them up for. Yeah, I bought four Sun Beach Colts and uh, one Sun Beach Philly, and uh, they're training down, I mean, r really, really good right now. Uh, still a little bit early, but I like what I see. Uh, I'm going to be pointing them for the start out in the Sire Stakes in Pennsylvania here, and then hopefully if they're good enough, uh, get them, you know, prepped for the, the Grand Circuit stuff, like the Breeders' Crown and stuff like that also. Chris, uh, you live around here. You have your barn around here. You seem to love so many aspects of the sport. You have everything from uh, the, the younger claimers all the way up to horses that are poised for the Breeders' Crown. Talk to us about, about your love for the sport. Yeah, I just like to race and, uh, and compete. And uh, it's, uh, it's great to race a five claimer, and it's great to race a 25 claimer, and uh, even condition racing. And, and it's more fun to win the stake races because it's just. Uh, it's uh, it's a little tougher to do that type of thing and have them type of horses, but uh, it's just fun to win and, and to race. Thank you, Kelly, and congratulations, Chris, on a great meet last year at Mohegan Sun at Pocono Downs. We'll try to follow that up with a couple in a row, too. Stay with us when we come back. We're going to go up to Yonkers as we go in the bike and to find out if Foiled Again will be Foiled Again or not. Stay tuned. Foiled Again in charge. Foiled Again in search of his first one of the season. Feel the action. Get a taste of victory. Spice things up. 
and play to win. Get him! Mohegan Sun, Off Track Wagering. Allentown, Carbondale, East Stroudsburg. Always leave happy. Welcome back. She's Heather. I'm Steve. And you know who you are. Guess what? Going up to Yonkers. Big doings on Saturday night. You know, they got all the Levy legs. Or are they limbs? Or are they divisions? Or are they... <laughs> There's something. They're races, okay? There you go. There you go. Thank you. Yes. Race 9 featured foil again, whose saddlebags are ungestup with cash. That means filled with. I know that. No. I, I'd never heard that word before, but I could figure it out by, you know, the sentence that you told me. Cool, okay. Is that good like that? Yeah. That's how she rolls. Okay. But he's lost his last two Levy legs, and tongues are beginning to wag, not the least of which is hers. I know, because I love him. Yeah. He is my boo. Okay, so, uh, by the way, you know, there was five divisions on this night. We're going to show you foil against first. All the purses, $50,000. This is round three. There's still a couple more rounds, I believe. You know, Sounds but like a yes. boxing match now. Number two, of course, the favorite foiled again. Like you said, he lost his first two, and he was the beaten favorite, but people love him. So, once again, he is the favorite here. Okay, number three, though, is Casimir Jitterbug. He won his Levy elimination or division last time out. 12 to 1. He's getting a lot more respect this time out, and the rest of them are just double digits. It's foiled again. Casimir Jitterbug comes to challenge on the outside. Toward the inside third, let us rock you away in roadway fourth. They're into the stretch. It's foiled again, trying to see it through. Foiled again by a length and a half. Casimir Jitterbug second, but now two lengths away. And third is Let Us Rock UA and Roadway moving between rivals down to the line. It's foiled again. Third time is a charm. Mm. Yes, finally. Foiled again has his way, and he gets his win in the Levy leg. Now, with Yannick Jingra on the bike, of course, his regular driver for trainer Romberg, they win in 153-1. and one. Now, if you, you don't know who this horse is those out there watching for the first time this horse is like a huge deal this horse is a bigger deal than steve ross like true story okay this is the richest pacer in north american harness racing history now he's got more than 4.6 million in the bank i'm counting Ooh. yes he's a former levy series champ He's done that twice, been a Levy champ twice, and he's looking to do it again this year. So we're going to see that in a couple weeks, um, if he can do it. Casimir Jitterbug was second, and Let Us Rock You was third. And he went right to the front. He wired this time. Yes. Which was very nice. Yeah. Okay. Glad to see he is back in the winner's circle. He is a great fan favorite and a terrific race horse. And he's a little horse, too. He's he so is. Cute. He's got this big heart. Oh. He's a little horse, yeah. So he paces a little <laughs> faster than me. That doesn't necessarily make him a better person. I may be a better person. He may be a better horse. Fair silly. enough. Fair enough? Fair enough. You dig that? Yeah. Okay. Just a reminder that... Family Fun Day is every Sunday here at Harris Philly. You're going to get specials like $2 hot dogs, $2 jumbo pretzels, $3 beer specials, Ooh, which is always fun. There's going to be fun going on all over the place, beanbag tossing, face painting, and between the ninth and 10th races, you may wind up on the track doing some really, really fun stuff. But you got to come out here to experience it to Harris, Philadelphia. That's going to do it for this edition of PA Harness Week. And for all of us here, Bruce Casella, Kelly Connors, Charlotte McBride, and my gorgeous partner, Heather Vitale. Me, I'm Steve Ross, reminding you to pick up the pace and get high on harness. It's only natural. Oh, they go. Explosive matter wins the Colonial easily. Underway.